Hey, Victory Tribe, welcome to Victory Now. Glad you guys are able to tune in on this Thursday evening. We have been talking about signs of the last days. What's going on in the end times? And what does the Bible say about the last days? And we've talked about why it's important to know that and uh, how important it is to know what the Scripture says about the last days. And honestly, you know, people have been saying that Jesus is coming back. In fact, there was one Catholic pope that said Jesus would come back in 1000 A.D. And we've had certain ones say he'd come back in 1500. John Wesley thought he would come back before the 1600s the founder of the Methodist Church. And uh, we've had people predict, the president of Yale uh, predicted uh, that he would come back in the year 2000. So we've had presidents of colleges and we've had leaders of movements predicting the coming back of Jesus. So we're not doing that. We're not predicting when Jesus will come back. Uh, Jesus said, no man knows the day nor the hour, but we are saying Jesus Christ, the Lord of all, is coming back to the earth. And uh, I believe probably he's coming back sooner than later. And I believe he's coming back sooner than we think he's coming back. So we want to, uh, as we're on this uh, broadcast and talking about the end times, what does the Bible say about the end times? We really just want to look at the signposts that are in the scriptures. So we're going to now begin to look at Matthew chapter 24, because Jesus spent the greatest amount of time in Matthew 21, 22, 23, and well, actually 21 through 25, but he spent a great deal of time talking about what the very last days would look like just before his coming back. So we're going to unpack Matthew chapter 24. So Matthew chapter 24, verse 1 said, Jesus came out from the temple and was going away when his disciples came up uh, to point out the temple buildings to him. And he said to them, do you not see all these things, all these buildings? He said, truly, I say to you, not one stone here will be left upon another, which will not be torn down. Now, this is the temple of Solomon that had already been destroyed once, several hundred years before, about 400 some years before, uh, by um, uh, Babylon. And that's when they were the Israelites were taken into captivity for 70 years. And when they came out of captivity, God moved supernaturally on the heart of a pagan king, King Cyrus, who gave them the authority and the finances to rebuild Solomon's temple. And uh, so they rebuilt it. And But the thing is, the Solomon's temple was a lot smaller. The rebuild was a lot smaller than the original temple, which Solomon had built. Uh, Solomon had gold that, you know, when Solomon first built that temple, he had gold cr like crazy. He had so much silver that he piled it up like dirt piles. Solomon was the richest man to ever walk on planet Earth. And he built this magnificent temple because of the Jewish nation disobeying God. Uh, they got over to where they were destroyed, put into captivity for 70 years. And then they were allowed to come back to this totally destroyed city of Jerusalem and they rebuilt the temple. But because they didn't have the financial means, it was a smaller temple. Now, Herod, who was a puppet to the Roman government, uh, he, in order to win and curry the favor of the Jewish people, he kept adding on to it and adding on to the temple of Jerusalem just to get, gain political clout with the Jews. And uh, so it became quite a beautiful building again. And so as they're walking through Jerusalem, the, his disciples, Jesus' disciples said, Lord, look at this awesome temple. And Jesus says this. He said, yeah, uh, I, I see all these things. He said, but I'm going to tell you that not one stone of this magnificent structure, not one stone will be left on top of another. In other words, this building is going to be destroyed. Well, I mean, that got their attention. And so in Matthew chapter 24, verse 3, as he was sitting in the Mount of Olives. So basically, when Jesus announced in the middle of the town, this temple is going to be destroyed. <laughs> it's going to be not one stone upon another. The disciples got really nervous because Jesus is already being considered a rebel. He's already uh, being pursued as a, a, a political dissident. Uh, the Jewish people don't like him. 
And now he's beginning to declare out of the public square that this beautiful building, which they hold very sacred, is going to be torn down. That could sound like a terroristic threat. And so now he's, <laughs> the disciples are concerned that Jesus is going to be taken as a terrorist and that he's threatening to basically blow up the building. So they get him out of town. They get him back out to the Mount of Olives, which is a very significant place. Uh, the Mount of Olives is where Jesus will literally land when he comes back his second time. He will be landing on the Mount of Olives. So where Jesus is teaching is exactly where he's going to be in the near future. So verse 3 says, as he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying. They came to him privately. They wanted to make sure no one, no spies were listening, no Pharisees were listening. They didn't want him arrested, you know, for threatening to blow up the Temple of Solomon. Um, so they came to him privately saying, tell us, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Now, they uh, began just to plummet him, pummel him with questions. I mean, they didn't give him a chance to answer the first one before they asked the second one. Couldn't answer the second one before they asked the third one. They're blasting Jesus with these questions in private because he's made an astounding statement. He said the Temple of Solomon, which they hold is very sacred. It's where God lives. In their mind, that is where the Shekinah glory is. That's where God dwells. And you're telling me somebody's going to tear down God's house? Jesus, have you lost your mind? What are you talking about? And so they, they ask him three, not one question, but they ask Jesus three questions. Number one, tell us, when will these things happen? That's the first question. In other words, when is this temple going to be torn down and one stone left upon another? And he doesn't answer it in detail in Matthew 24, but he does answer that question in Luke 21, verse 10 through 24, and we're going to cover that. The second question that they asked is, uh, what will be the sign of your coming? And this we're talking about the second coming, not the rapture of the church, not the catching away of the church. And the third question they're asking, and what is the sign of the end of the age? And we're not going to go into a lot of that right now, but God has dealt differently, men differently in different ages. And so this was a specific age they were in. They were in what is called the age of the law. They were operating under the law of Moses. And they're asking, when is the end of the age going to happen? And so Jesus answers these questions in Matthew 24. He answers, when is it, what's the sign of his coming? And when will be the end of the age? But we're going to go to Luke 21 and let Jesus tell us when did that first sign happen? When did Jerusalem get destroyed? What happened? Now, the reason I want to go here is because many preachers and Bible expositors will confuse these things, and they'll tell you that this is what's going to happen now, and it's already happened. So we're going to look at Luke 21 and begin in verse 10 and look to, through 10 through 24. What I'm getting ready to read to you answers the first question, when will Jerusalem be destroyed? And the quick answer is it was destroyed in A.D. 70. It was destroyed in A.D. 70, and the Israelite nation, the Jewish nation, did not come and begin to inhabit it again until 1948, which is a massive sign that we're in the last days. And they took over the city of Jerusalem in the Six-Day War uh, in 1967. They reoccupied Jerusalem, and that was the first time that they had been there since A.D. 70. So listen to what Jesus says here. Beginning in... Uh, Oh, I'm in the wrong chapter. Beginning in Luke 21, 10, let's hear, because again, people think that this is talking about now when it's not. It's talking about what already happened. He said, then he continued by saying to them, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be great earthquakes in various places, plagues and famines, and there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. Now that's talking about what's coming up in the tribulation, that there'll be nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Now, uh, if you have uh, just a little bit of uh, understanding of the Greek language, 
because the Bible was written in Aramaic and Greek and Hebrew in the Old Testament. The word nation here is the Greek word ethnos. We get the word ethnicity, okay? Well, we could say race. And so it says here that one of the signs that precedes the coming of the tribulation, the seven years of tribulation, is ethnic group will rise up against ethnic group. And then secondly, kingdom against kingdom. And the word kingdom here is Basileia. Uh, it, it's not talking about nations here. Really, if you dig into this, it's talking about religions. You've got the Muslim kingdom against the Jewish kingdom, against the Christian kingdom. And so it's more about a religious domain, a spiritual domain, more than a political one. It also, the word kingdom can also mean uh, a conglomerate of nations, not just one nation, but a league of nations, where a league of nations will come uh, and battle against another league of nations. And we saw that begin to happen in 1914 with World War I, where it wasn't just one nation against another, it was literally a league of nations against a league of nations. All right? And he said, so the first sign uh, that will come is that ethnic groups will begin to fight each other and leagues of nations and religions represented by leagues of nations will begin to fight each other. Then he said there will be great earthquakes in various places, plagues and famines. Again, plagues, uh, we're looking at COVID-19 right now. We're looking at famines, uh, people starving to death and the hunger crisis that's on the earth. Economic, we could say economic crisis. Um, and there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. Now, this is talking about the coming tribulation. We'll begin to see the tremors of it as we move close to the seven years of tribulation. And we're already seeing the foretaste of uh, the seven years of tribulation. But he's talking about what will happen. Then he says in verse 12, but before all these things, now he's going back. He said, that's what's going to happen in the tribulation and the period just before it. He says, but before all these things, before this seven year of tribulation, he said, they will lay their hands on you and will persecute you, delivering you to the synagogues and prisons, bringing you before kings and governors for my name's sake. He's talking about persecution, the persecution of the disciples uh, as they begin to go out and establish the gospel. He said, it will lead to an opportunity for your testimony. And if you read about the Apostle Paul, when he was arrested in the temple, he went and he testified to Felix, one of the kings, and then he pled his case to Roman uh, Julius Caesar, and he went there and testified to the greatest leader of that then known time. And so Jesus predicted that Paul among many of them, would have an opportunity through persecution to share the gospel with the highest political leaders in the land, just like Daniel did when he was arrested and made to serve in the king's court of a foreign nation. He said, so make up your minds not to prepare ahead of time uh, to defend yourselves. Don't, don't try to premeditate how you're going to answer. And this is powerful. Verse uh, 15 says, for I will give you utterance and wisdom, which none of your opponents will be able to resist or refute. Jesus said, you're going to be persecuted as you begin to establish an apostolic mission of reaching the world and you begin to branch out just like the apostle Paul. And he said, but don't worry when you're under this kind of pressure. He said, don't try to figure out how you're going to answer, how you're going to defend yourself in the court of law, how you're going to, you know, speak. He said, because uh, he said, you will be given utterance and wisdom, which none of your opponents will be able to resist or refute. Now, if you remember in Acts chapter 7, when Stephen was being persecuted at the very beginning of the church, uh, it says that he had such a wisdom from God that they did not know how to deal with him. He spoke by such power and by such wisdom that they didn't know what to do. In fact, Acts chapter 7 verse 54 says, now when they heard this, when, when Stephen was testifying, uh, to these persecutors, these Jewish persecutors. Uh, he said, now when they heard this, they were cut to the quick and they began gnashing their teeth at him. They could not out-argue him because of the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, but so all they could do was get angry and attack him, all right? 
And I'm telling you right now, believer, if you're a follower of Jesus, the anointing of God, the Spirit of God, and the wisdom of God is going to operate on you in these last days because there are debates and questions and, and concerns coming up right now in the last days that you don't have the mental capacity to deal with. Uh, everything seems to be a gray area. Should we wear a mask? Should we not wear a, a mask? Should we be uh, vaccinated? Should we not be vaccinated? What's going on? There's so many hidden things now, so many, a lot of, of truth and error being mixed together, even from the medical world, from the political world, from the religious world, that we really don't know the answer. But God is saying, Jesus is telling you, just like he told them, I have given you the Holy Spirit. He will tell you how to answer. He will give you wisdom and give you power to deal with this difficult time that we're in. We're out of time this morning. We'll pick up here next week and uh, right where we left off. God bless you. Thank you.